Hey guys, Matt here. So on June 11th, Nintendo had its 2019 E3 press conference where they announced information about several new games coming out this year. Included in this announcement was more information about Pokemon Sword and Shield. As you remember, just last week there was a Pokemon Direct where we got introduced to several new features which will be in Sword and Shield. We met a gym, new gym leader, and we also met several new Pokemon, including the legendary version mascots. So now, here we are, less than a week later, and we already have more new Pokemon Sword and Shield information due to the E3 conference that happened on June 11th. First of all, we were introduced to two new Pokemon, Yamper and Impidimp. Yamper is an electric type Pokemon with the ability Ball Fetch, which is actually a pretty neat ability. A Pokemon with this ability will collect the first Pokeball thrown that fails to catch a Pokemon if they are not holding an item. So if you throw a Pokeball at a Pokemon, the Pokemon breaks free, Yamper will actually go and collect that Pokeball so you don't lose it. The other Pokemon, Impidimp, is a dark fairy Pokemon, and other than that, not too much else is known about that Pokemon. The only reason we've seen these Pokemon is from people taking pictures and videos of them actually playing through Pokemon Sword and Shield at the E3 event. I don't know if these Pokemon have actually been officially announced by Nintendo yet, but we have seen them through these uh, videos and photos. We also met a new gym leader, the water type trainer Nessa. In the gameplay footage, she is shown to have a Dreadnought and a Goldeen. Although these Pokemon may have just been for E3 demo purposes, we're not sure if these will be her actual Pokemon when the game itself comes out. The gym itself looks pretty similar to Pokemon gyms that there are gym trainers to battle before the actual gym leader herself, and there are also little puzzles to solve in order to reach the gym leader. This gym featured in the E3 gameplay footage shows waterfalls that you turn on or off in order to progress further into the gym. The official gameplay footage from Nintendo Treehouse showed a lot of the wild area. There's a lot of different things your character can do as far as approaching and finding Pokemon. You can walk normally, you can run, you can crouch down and kind of sneak around, and you can also whistle. Whistling affects Pokemon differently. Some Pokemon will come towards you when you whistle, while others may run away or try to avoid you. Once you encounter a Pokemon, however, the battling and catching mechanic is the same as it has been in the previous main series games, where you battle the Pokemon to weaken it, and then you throw the Pokeball at it and hope you catch it. Although you can access the wild area early in the game, some of the Pokemon you encounter may be stronger than the Pokemon on your team. For instance, in the official gameplay footage that they showed, they ran into a level 26 Machoke. Meanwhile, the Pokemon on the team were mostly still in their low to mid teens. Also, different sections of what otherwise seems to be the same wild area can have different weather. They moved from one section to another and it changed from raining to snowing. We also got to watch a max raid battle against a Dynamaxed Steelix. Attacks that would otherwise be super effective against the Steelix did very little damage, so it is very much like a Pokemon Go raid battle in that regard. Also, the Steelix used multiple moves in a row at some points, so it doesn't necessarily wait for the other four Pokemon to attack first. Also, once its HP got down to a certain point, a barrier went up around Steelix, which had to be broken before attacks were able to do damage again. Once Steelix's HP was depleted, it was able to be caught by potentially every trainer in the battle. They also mentioned that if you're unable to catch the Pokemon in the Max Raid battle, that you'll also get other items, prizes, although we're not quite sure what that is, or at least I'm not. We also saw that the bicycle is making a comeback in this game and that you can also ride it through water. I'm not sure if you can ride the bicycle through any water or if only through water in the wild area or shallow water or what. During the gameplay, we saw some stamps show up on the left side of the screen. This indicates what other players are doing and if they want to do something with you, like battle or trade. They also made the comment that Dynamaxing replaces Mega Evolution and Z moves. So that makes it sound like these features that were introduced in previous generations will not be in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. They also talked about the Pokemon Home service, which was actually announced a few weeks back. They talked about how it will be able to connect the Pokemon RPGs with Pokemon Go so that players can gather all of their Pokemon in a single location. However, the key difference between Pokemon Home and Pokemon Bank that they brought up was that in the past, 
It could be Pokemon over two, for instance, Sun and Moon from previous games, even if they weren't in the Alolan Pokedex or even in the National Pokedex. But now you will not be able to bring Pokemon over to Sword and Shield if they are not in the Galar Region Pokedex. There is simply no support for these Pokemon in the game. There's one thing I'd like to talk about, and it's about the Pokemon Home service that we recently announced. So it will connect with the Pokemon RPGs as well as Pokemon Go to allow players to really gather all of their Pokemon in a single location. And of course it will also work with uh, the Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games. But there is one important change from the previous Pokemon Bank service that I want to tell all of its users about. So in previous uh, games that worked with the Pokemon Bank service, you were able to, for example in Sun and Moon, bring over any Pokemon even if they weren't in the Alola Pokedex. But with the transition to the Nintendo Switch hardware, with its, you know, it's, it being much more powerful, allowing us to be much more expressive with each of the individual Pokemon. And now we're well over 800 uh, Pokemon species in the games. And at Game Freak, we really spent a lot of time thinking about what the best way to move forward was, really preserving the quality of all the different Pokemon, while also you know, taking into account the battle balance, having so many different Pokemon available, all within you know, a limited development time, so we don't keep fans waiting too long for every new entry in the series. And after a lot of discussion, we decided to come to kind of a new direction. And so what that means for Pokemon Sword and Shield is that players will be able to transfer their Pokemon from Pokemon Home only if they appear in the Galar Region Pokedex. So we were very careful. We spent a lot of time really thinking what the best selection of Pokemon to match the setting of the adventure would be. So I'll talk more about the details in future opportunities such as media interviews, but I wanted to I'll let you know today. I know there are a lot of users of the Pokemon Bank service who are looking forward to Pokemon Home, so I wanted to let them know what the change would be well in advance. But of course, as uh, somebody who's been hunting for a lot of shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Let's Go, um, any of those Pokemon that do appear in Pokemon Sword and Shield, I'll still be able to transfer uh, from Pokemon Let's Go into Pokemon Sword and Shield through Pokemon Home, correct? That's right, yeah, as long as they're in the Galar Region Pokedex, you can transfer them from home. So as of now, you are not able to catch them all in Pokemon Sword and Shield. They alluded to the fact that there are now over 800 Pokemon and having all of the available Pokemon in the new platform of Nintendo Switch would have taken a long time to accomplish. So hopefully at some point we may be able to catch them all in Pokemon Sword and Shield, if not a future game. But for now we are going to be limited only to the Pokemon that appear in the Galar Region Pokedex. This particular announcement caused a lot of backlash in the Pokemon community. I have seen a lot of videos come up that are dealing with this, just this issue alone. And I'm also gonna make a video that kind of deals with this issue, but I tend to try and look more on the positive side of things. So I'm gonna try and put a positive spin on it if I can. Me personally, since I don't really move Pokemon from game to game as much as I know other players do, it's not really that big of a deal for me personally. I do know that the Galar Region Dex is supposed to be one of the largest regional Pokédexes that we've seen at this point, so I feel pretty confident that I'm going to be able to put together a good six Pokémon team for this game. However, if I did want to bring Pokémon over from previous games, I would have to make sure that they were actually in the Galar Region Pokédex before I did that. Anyway guys, this was my wrap up of the E3 conference Pokémon wise. Let me know what you guys thought. Put, uh, put your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this whole not all the Pokemon being available. Let me know what you thought about the wild area and the max raid battle and everything else. Let me know what you thought about the two new Pokemon that we saw. Personally, I did not like them at first, to be honest. I didn't like either one of them. I thought they looked kind of derpy, but they're starting to grow on me. They're starting to grow on me. I really like Impidimp's typing, Dark and Fairy. I think that's really interesting. And I think Impidimp especially has a lot of potential for uh, further evolution. So we'll see what happens with those. But anyway, again, thank you for watching, guys. Leave a like, leave a comment. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.